Hello guys, it's Shadows Rain here, and today we're going to be comparing the SKS against the EBR. Now, YouTubers will be telling you that the SKS is an overpowered weapon that needs a nerf. Well, I'm here to tell you that they're wrong. So, like the EBR, it's a high-risk, high-reward weapon, and in this video, we're going to be breaking down their similarities, their differences, and what's better than what in certain situations. We'll also be telling you which one is the one that you should be using. So, with that, if you do like the video, please hit like and subscribe, helps me out loads, and let's get right into the video and break it all down for you. Take care. Right, so, right off the bat, both weapons possess the following qualities. They both have one shot kill potential to the head, which is delicious. Two shot kill potential when not a headshot, they have decent range, and they are devastating weapons when you use them accurately. And both of them have the following flaws. Recoil can be trouble when not controlled with attachments not fast handling, struggles up close, and needs attachments. Uh, so it will be the barrel for the SKS and stock for the EBR. We'll get into specifics later on in the video when it comes to those attachments. So what gun has the stronger quality over the others? Let's start with the EBR. The EBR is better at control, raw damage, consistency with two kills without attachments, slight but noticeably better recoil, and feels like you flinch a little bit less than when you're using the gun as compared to the SKS. Obviously it still flinches quite a bit, but I don't know, it just feels a lot better with the EBR. Uh, in that case, the SKS, that rate of fire, oh, so refreshing. Also for the SKS, it has much faster handling, has generous mags, so its starting mag starts with the highest mag you can get for an EBR at 20 rounds. It has much better hip fire. I don't feel like a completely headless chicken when I'm having the hip fire with the, e uh, with the SKS, sorry. It has a cleaner iron sight, which does make it easier to get the ghoul challenges for. Obviously the one where you're trying to get the kills without the attachments. I do find that this gun is more forgiving, because if you miss a shot with the EBR, you're a lot more likely to get killed than if you miss a shot with an SKS with that extra fire rate. And the gun doesn't need babysitting. And by that, I mean the SKS doesn't need a dedicated secondary to complement the weapon. So for the EBR, I would usually run the model with the Dragon's Breath. And that usually covers the range that the EBR is, is lacking up close and personal. Just because I feel with a snake shot, there is still a little bit of a middle gap where it's too far away for a snake shot and just that little bit too close for an EBR that I wouldn't be confident in taking the fight whereas with the with the model it does make, it does compensate for that a little bit. So with all that being said let's have a little look and see how I'm running these guns. We'll start with the EBR. So as you can see I'm using a compensator, a range of foregrip, the 20 round mags, the monocle reflex sight and the FSS Raider Chassis Elite. Now, this gives me a good balance between recoil control and that movement speed and the hand thing, just, just to give it that little bit of an edge. As I mentioned in the How Does It Feel video, the, this weapon desperately needs that stock. If it doesn't have that stock, it's too heavy, it's too clunky, and you lose that little bit of an advantage that you will be getting over the assault rifle players in those circumstances that you'll be looking to use this weapon in. Um, on the flip side of that, we'll have a little look at the SKS. That, I'm running a monolithic suppressor and the 22 inch barrel. And I'm running both of these to give it as much range as possible. The reason I'm giving it as much damage range as possible is because the damage range feels inconsistent. Well, by that I mean it feels like it can take three and four shots to kill sometimes, even when you're hitting the upper chest, which I feel is wrong. So, the EBR doesn't do that. It doesn't matter where you hit them, you're always gonna get a two shot kill unless you're shooting someone through a wall. I very, very, very rarely, and I can't stress that enough, get three shot kills with the EBR. They're just not needed. Whereas with the SKS, I do find it happens a good couple times a game, and that can be frustrating. So, yes, uh, I'm also running the range of foregrip on the SKS. Uh, again, to help with that recoil, because it's more spammable. Yes, technically the recoil is better on the SKS, but when you're actually firing at a maximum fire rate, which you will find you are doing, then you are going to have a much higher level of recoil than what you would with the EBR. Now, the reason that that is a bit of a problem is because if you're going to be slowing down your fire to compensate for that, then you might as well be using the EBR anyway and have yourself that guaranteed two-shot kill. That's just how I see it. Uh, I also run the monocle reflex sight. Again, the sight is just preference, really. I find that's the cleanest one. It helps you like, acquire the target a lot easier. 
and I'm running the sword off stock because I don't know it just gives that it gives it just that little bit more mobility the gun already is very mobile but it just gives it that extra bit mobility and I find that it's a much much faster gun than the than the EPR so we'll have a little look into the next section of the video and just find out how I'm running these uh, class setups so you can see with the EPR that I am running the shotgun as mentioned uh, with overkill now the other two perks around that I do tend to like make it like objective base I do tend to get more kill streaks with the EBR just purely because I, you know I've had I've had a good few months with the EBR whereas the SKS has only come out so I'm quite confident that I can pick people off at long ranges and when people get all, all of them like at short ranges I can pick them off and that's why I'm using spotter as well just to, just to compensate for that lack of EOD that I would usually be running on a on the on a objective maps like domination or a hard point or something like that i also usually run trophy systems and lots of to, to protect me as best i can looking at the sks i do feel that this gun does benefit from the fact that you don't need to run that second perk as overkill and with that you'll find that your close encounter range for the sks is a little bit more forgiving than the ebr purely because you can spam that hip fire a bit more and it feels like you land more shots a bit more consistently at close range with it which makes it a bit unnecessary to have to run the shotgun as a primary like a second primary and that's just because the snake shot will cover that range where you can't really use the the sks the outer ridges of the snake shot range is where the gun begins to shine it's where the sks begins to shine and for that you can use whatever second perk you want and uh, the grenades in both of these again are objective based sometimes i like to dig around with a snapshot grenade sometimes i like to dig around with smoke the grenades, if people are giving you, you know, grenade setups for, for classes, unless it's from like a demolitions class or like a, a dedicated ghost class, just run what you want. That's what I usually do. Usually ignore those parts of their videos, so you by all means you can ignore this part of my video. So the bit that you'll be waiting for is does it replace my EBR? Now initially I thought it would, just with that extra rate of fire and with that that, that quickness, that extra quickness that it has, which is why you would run the stock on the e, um, on the SKS, sorry. On small 6v6 maps, I will be using the SKS. I'm using that because even if you do need that third shot up close, it's usually forgiving enough where you can just spam it through anyway. And by the time you land three shots with an SKS, you may have in that same time hit two if you'd miss one with an EBR. And um, yeah, so I'll be running, running it on the smaller maps. But my god, the EBR is still ridiculously fun, so that's fine and lethal. The SKS has the extra mags to begin with, without the attachment, better hip fire and rate of fire, and that makes up for its unreliable two-hit kill at, at, at these medium ranges that I find, uh, which is everything for these weapons. Now, with that being said, if you are on a large 6v6 map, or you're in the position where you want to have that more consistent two-shot kill, then go with the EBR. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that one of the guns isn't better than the other. Oh, who am I kidding? I am. What I'm trying to say is that both these guns are not so much as better than one of them, but different. So, as mentioned, the SKS, you are going to get a few free shot kills at ranges you would like to think you'd be getting the two hit kills. But you know what I mean? You're just going to be getting those situations where you'll be firing the third one off of anyway, and they'll already be dead before you realize the second one hasn't killed them. Whereas with the EBR, it is going to take those two hits to kill, but if you do miss your shots, you are going to be punished a little bit more than what you would be with the SKS. So yeah, 10v10 maps and large 6v6 maps, go for the EBR. Smaller 6v6 maps or where you can control your sight lines a little bit better, I'll go SKS. More aggression, go to the SKS. And that little bit more control and that little bit more consistency goes for the EBR. And that's how I'm running this at the moment. I've got both these guns gold now, as you can see. So I would like to think I am qualified on talking about these marksman rifles, as you don't see many people with these in gold. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, again, please hit like and subscribe. It helps me out loads. And what do you think of this video? Do you think I'm, I'm right in any of these? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know. Also, it's worth mentioning in here as well, just before we go, that I'm not mentioning Warzone because these both use sniper ammo. And sniper ammo is very scarce and you don't get much of it as a maximum capacity. Therefore, I usually tend to prefer to use the other sniper rifles, as I do find for the ammo that you can carry, it's just a lot better to run those instead. It's much more efficient because by the time you've used two or three mags of any, either of these guns, you're completely out of ammo and that's no good for a sniper class. And uh, yeah, you take care, you all. Bye.